Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose xn is a convergent sequence of real numbers, where xn is greater than or equal to zero for all positive integers n. Then, the limit of xn is greater than or equal to zero. Now, before we get into the proof, let's first remind ourselves what the definition of the limit of a sequence is. Well, to say that xn converges to x means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer k, such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than epsilon. Okay, so now let's get into the proof. To start out, let's give ourselves a convergent sequence of real numbers, xn, and let's assume that xn is greater than or equal to zero for all positive integers n. And since xn is a convergent sequence, we'll say that x is the value that xn converges to. And our whole goal is to show that x is greater than or equal to zero. Well, let's assume for a contradiction, we instead have that x is less than zero. Well then, the negative x is greater than zero. Now, since xn converges to x, this means we are given that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So it must work for the positive real number negative x. So taking epsilon to be the negative of x, we have that there is some positive integer k such that for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, the absolute value of xn minus x is less than the negative of x. And since this statement is true, we can show that this implies for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, xn is less than zero. And to see how that's the case, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer greater than or equal to k. I'll call it n. Well then, xn minus x is less than or equal to the absolute value of xn minus x. Because every number is less than or equal to its absolute value. But the absolute value of xn minus x is less than negative x. The reason why is because this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to k. Because of that, it must work for the positive integer n that we have here. So taking n to be the n we have here, we have that this is true. So this is in fact less than negative x. So this guy is less than negative x. And adding x on both sides, we get that xn is less than zero. So putting this together, we see that under the assumption n is greater than or equal to k, it follows that xn is less than zero. Since n was arbitrary, this means we have shown for all positive integers n greater than or equal to k, xn is less than zero. Now, of course, k is greater than or equal to k. Since this statement works for every positive integer greater than or equal to k, it must work for k. So taking n to be k, we have that xk is less than zero. But remember, we're working under the assumption that xn is greater than or equal to zero for all positive integers n. Well, since this statement works for every positive integer, it must work for the positive integer k. So taking n to be k, we have that xk is greater than or equal to zero. So xk is less than zero and xk is greater than or equal to zero, which gives us a contradiction. Our assumption that x is less than zero less to a contradiction, so we must instead have that x is greater than or equal to zero. So xn converges to a value that is greater than or equal to zero. And that's exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.